Ciao, everyone. This is Esther. Alfred here. Of You, Me, and Sicily. And welcome to our channel, or welcome back to You, Me, and Sicily. We're going to go all over the island today. It's a little bit chilly here, but it's sunny, but it's a good thing. And we have layers on, believe it or not. I kind of feel like we're in New England here today. Wow, that's late January weather for you. Uh, we're going to start out in Palermo, the capital of Sicily. What a great city that is. You know, it was founded by the Phoenicians between the 6th and 8th century before Christ. Then it was obviously a Carthaginian military hold. Then the Romans came, then the Arabs came. Came, the Normans came and they all left their mark on Palermo. But what a robust city it is. Palermo is a open city in terms of different ethnic groups still there to this day. Mm -hmm. And I really have always said that I think the whole world can learn from how people live in peace in Palermo side by side from all religions, all ethnic persuasions. And I think it has to do with the mayor who's been there forever, Orlando, who's been very, very open, including even being very receptive to the migrants from Tunisia and Libya. You know, things, that whole like thing that. about living together, one of the most exquisite examples of that coexistence is inside the Capella Palantina, which is uh, the chapel. Everywhere you look, every single centimeter is covered by some type of art that was made by the Arabs, the Byzantines and of course the Normans and that what a place that is that really just take your breath away. Misty heaven. Why? Because the circle is the most perfect geometrical figure. Because in the circle you can put inside any other geometrical figure. The circle means movement, means perfection, means harmony. You know the 20th century uh, marked an era in Palermo of a lot of violence. It had violence, of course, from the Allied bombing, which mm -hmm. destroyed practically most of the city. And that gave rise to the rise of the mafia taking over the building trades and putting up a bunch of, a bunch, thousands of cheaply built concrete structures that kind of give a blight to the city. But certain areas were untouched. And those areas are the ones that you have to seek out in the historic district. Norman style. The Normans, I tell you again, they used the Muslim architects to build this cathedral, dating back the year 1185. Yeah, the historic district is really great because you can you know, park your car or have the drop the bus drop you off and it's really a walkable city so for instance if you start by at the cathedral which by the way was one time a mosque and how cool is yeah. that there were at one time 300 mosques in the city of palermo but you walk around inside the cathedral then you go behind that because behind there's unbelievable architecture and then you can walk over to the open market that is such a must do in sicily <laughs> You know, stopping over there by the Capo or the Bellaro markets is a great way to really experience everyday life there in Sicily, in Palermo, I mean, because all the locals go there. Of course, a lot of tourists do as well, but the locals go there to buy their stuff, and of course, great street foods as well. That's what we call them. I'm gonna tell you, come here with me. No, no, no. Renato Gattuzzo, the famous uh, Sicilian artist who memorialized La Vucaria mm -hmm. in probably one of the most famous paintings that really is quintessential Sicily to this day. You ought to take a look at the La Vucaria. People study that that uh, picture, and we actually saw it. It's just a great. We saw film. it in Rome. We saw it in Rome at uh, what's the name of the palace over there? The big uh, governmental palace, Chigi, the Chigi Palace. 
mm-hmm. something like that, right? But um, it's a very special place. It has a, it's the largest city, of course, in um, Sicily. Uh, although the population, I believe, has gone down a little bit, but it's still the most powerful. It's the seat of the government. Yeah. So uh, it's a very powerful place, and you really have to go there. When you go there, it's a there, bustling yeah. city. I mean, if you guys, city, if you guys right. like city, and if you like moving your New York type of bustling city, that's definitely Palermo is a place for you. Are there no go zones in Palermo? Yes. Yes. Are there no go zones in every city that you could think of in the United States of America? Yes. You have to watch yourself, okay? My suggestion is if you go, hire a guide. We Do have a walking plenty. tour in a safe it's area. It's doable. It's very, very you doable. You know, the other place that I really like is the Quattro Canto, the four corners with the architecture on the four buildings that also stunning. You just stand there in the middle of the city and you look around at all the buildings and it's just unbelievable but Palermo is definitely a doable city walking wise and uh, it's safe you know a lot of people ask us is it safe to go there yes it's safe and not far from Palermo is of course Mondreale another beautiful little city about 25 30 minutes away and uh, another cathedral that is remarkable You know, here's a little hint for you. If you're staying in Palermo or if you're staying in Monreale, you can make arrangements with your local hotel to take a kind of like a hop-on, hop-off type of a bus. They have buses there that... um, you can just go to a, you know, go to a place and you hop off the bus and then you go to another place and you hop off another bus. And they have another type of tour bus where you pay a, a fee and you have a guide there and she'll take you to both those places. Those, yeah. those places are just great. Montreal is, is another special a local, place. A local guide, Gabriella, is really good at that. But you know, I love the story about uh, the Cathedral of Montreal because it was William II. And by the way, here's another legend after legend here in Sicily. And legend has it that William II fell asleep under a carob tree and he had a dream where the Virgin Mary came to him and asked him, to build a cathedral in her name. And guess what? When they took the tree up, they found some coins, gold, and it financed part of the building of that cathedral. Just another one of those beautiful legends. Now, the other thing, by the way, at that cathedral, there's a beautiful monastery. And you go inside that monastery, and it has exquisite, again, mosaics. And behind it is a beautiful panorama of the city called Conca de Oro because of the gold, golden lemons that are splattered all over the place. Golden Coast is just a, a spectacular place. The Coast of the Gold is just a beautiful place uh, to visit. And all the little towns that do go to the left and go to the right within, yeah. say, 15 or 20 miles, are just, uh, it's a good take. Palermo. It's it's Palermo, the epicenter at one time of all of Europe. Imagine that, the epicenter Stop of all of Europe. Stop and think about that. Stop and think about that one. Let's not forget, Esther, the food. The food is so fundamentally different because it's tinged with Arab and Muslim yeah. cuisine that it's a lot different from the food over here where we're at, which is basically tinged with. Greek uh, cuisine. Yeah, but it's made it over different here. Different stuff. And different the other stuff. thing, you know, with the uh, markets, too, that type of bartering, unero, 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 that type of bartering and yelling is definitely an Arab influence here in Sicily that is so uh, prevalent in the Balo and Capo markets over there. It has a great university. The University of Palermo, Palermo? is a wonderful school. It has, generally speaking, excellent academic graduates there. Good hospitals, and it's a great. Yeah. It's an it's it's the the lifeblood of Sicily. How how Palermo goes, thus goes the rest of Sicily, for sure. Mm-hmm. 
One of the most sobering experiences that I've had in my entire tw over 20 years in Sicily was the time that Esther and I went to the uh, Spanish prison that held the Mafia Maxi Trials. We were invited there. We went there for, it was on the anniversary of the assassinations of Borsellino and Falcone. Giovanni Falcone, May 23rd. <clears throat> and we went there, and uh, it was simulcast between Palermo and all, all, the, over. all, the, metro all the metropolitan cities of Italy. Yeah. But we were right inside, and we were within a couple of feet away from the cages that they held the mafioso. And I'm telling you right now, I because I study this stuff, mm -hmm. I felt the spirit of that whole era that was just taking place. It was a terrible, yeah. terrible time in the history of uh, Sicily. Thousands of people died. You know, people say, but Alfred, you know, not that many people died in Sicily, only a couple of thousand. Wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong, for those of you who think that. The heroin that was going into the United States of America ki ended up killing thousands of people. Okay, so when you talk about the mafia you know, regime of Toto Riena and all these other guys, you need to think of the catastrophe that they did in the United States. So let's add those folks in, those people in New York City, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Boston, where you got cheap heroin on the streets thanks to the mafioso from Sicily. People don't talk about that. It wasn't all grandeur, that's for sure. That's just my opinion. You know, for me, it was very memorable <clears throat> during that day, May 23rd. I think it was 2015 or 16, uh, when Sergio Mattarella, the former president of the Republic of Italy, also spoke. Of course, his brother was murdered by the mafia, but we got to interview the senator of the parliament. And also, the sister of Giovanni Falcone was there giving a remarkable speech, an anti-mafia speech. And, you know, you guys, you, everyone asks about mafia, 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 mafia. Yes, mafia exists here, but the anti-mafia movement is huge here. There are several people running all types of programs to try to get the kids off the street, sort of speak, uh, from music to horseback riding to sailing to all types of sort of organizations that are really focused on putting an end to the mafia activities, the violent mafia activities that happened here for so long. Unfortunately, the mafia has mutated from where it was in the 80s and 90s of the last mm -hmm. century. Nowadays, it's more of a uh, business type of yeah. MBA type of uh, businessman who is indistinguishable from the thugs. And okay. also there's low level mafia. You yeah, know, this, you have the, the guys. Muscle. They call them the muscle. You guys group. have, uh, you know, you go to a pizza place and there's a guy standing outside the parking area and he's going to, you know, look at your car, watch your car for one euro. And so you tip him off. So that type of low level mafia, of course, exists here. But they, they it, it has mutated. It's not as violent as it was in the 80s let's, let's when give lots of boys uh, mm -hmm. and men were killed because of the mafia. I don't think that a tourist is going to get bothered by any mafioso of any type. And the reason is, is they want the tourist dollar yeah, good point. so they can shake down the businessman that you're giving your tourist dollar to. They'll welcome you. They're not going to bother you. So let's let's just look at it from that, that tone of voice. I want to say a big thank you to all our major sponsors for helping us make videos like this possible. Their names are at the end. And our newest one, uh, Daniel. Ciao, Daniel from Italy Wine. Thank you so much for your support. Speaking about, uh, speaking about what she's saying, sponsors, we have somebody call us, uh, sent us an email. They'd like us to do something on Ragusa, but they can't afford to sponsor the entire piece. So what we would like to try to find out, if we could, if we can find one or two other people who would be interested to chip in and sponsor a beautiful piece that we're planning on doing this spring. Actually, actually, it's right outside of Ragusa, in the province of Ragusa. It's called Scogliti, I believe. So it's right over there. But in any case, thank you to everyone for your support. Also, our community members on YouTube for $1.99. You become a community member, a small way of supporting this channel. So grazie mille. Right, now let's head even more west, further west, to the western north northwesternmost point of Sicily, San Vito Lo Capo, 
voted year after year one of the most beautiful beaches in Europe. And of course, it's famous for the Couscous Festival in September, where people from all over come and serve all types of couscous, fish couscous, meat couscous, vegetable couscous, chocolate couscous. No, just kidding. <laughs> couscous. E questa che carne, carne e verdura. Meat and vegetables. What I want to say about when I think about San Vito, I think about two beautiful American gals who live in New England. You've got Vivian Cucciera and her sister Maria, and Maria's son Luigi, who is serving our country right now. And, God bless them. And they are the quintessential Sicilian women. I'm telling you right now, they're huge supporters of ours. Yeah. And uh, I remember one year. So we went to the house. So Eve. it was the mother was born in San Vito Lo Capo, and uh, she said, you know, next door was a neighbor that she really missed. And so one day when we were in San Vito Lo Capo, I said, Viv, give me the address of the woman, and I went and knocked on her door, and she we did a little bit of video and sent it to Vivian. But uh, what a great little town, a little bit of a Caribbean feel, right? San Vito Lo Capo, and it's really, you know, another one of those walkable areas you park the car and you walk down to the beaches uh, get a chair or get a mattress and go into the water and of course there's that beautiful mountain the Mont Monaco Mont Monaco is the name of it and uh, there's a beautiful sanctuary as well Alfred uh, the sanctuary of San Vito is there. The churches there are beautiful. But let me tell you what I think about Esther when I see here Saint Vito, uh, San Vito San. Lo Capo. The first thing I think about, other than couscous, <laughs> eating couscous at great restaurants, mm -hmm. is a very delicious dessert that they sell. It's called caldo freddo, mm -hmm. hot and cold, which is the rough equivalent to a sundae that we have in the United States, except it's made with gelato, okay? So that's the cold. And then they put the hot chocolate syrup on top of it. It's one of the only places, <coughs> excuse me, I've seen in Sicily that has that. That's one of the things that I think about in San Fito. I but, also it, you know, before you go on, uh, of course, the gelato, granita, but, you know, we said couscous festival. And it's not just during the festival that couscous is available. <coughs> of course, all the restaurants have it. You know, couscous is one of those things that is now splattered all over the island. But if you're going to have good couscous, have it in San Vito Lo Campo. The other thing that I uh, think about San, uh, in San Vito are the Tunisian um, guys, men and women, who sell a whole bevy of stuff on the sidewalk. Jewelry, Ju clothes. Clothing, jewelry. If you're, uh, it's very unique. If you're into wearing uh, scarves or flowy little dresses and so forth, women I'm talking about, that place in San Vito is good for you. They also have great little electronic gadgets uh, to, well, that, can markets, enhance, that can enhance your cell phones and stuff. Alfred, right on the they street. have those little markets, those little gadgets everywhere. They even have them in Tarmina and Catania. Those little guys are all over the place. But I like, <laughs> I like going there because the ambiance of the, it reminds me of the kibosh. You know, the kibosh in Tunisia or the kibosh mm -hmm. even in... Uh, uh, where is that? Masala Davalo, where you have the street vendors over there. So that's the second thing. And you know, now I'll funny, give you an opportunity, thing, and then I'll tell you my third thing. I think a really fun thing, too, to do there is take a boat ride over there at the Iranian Sea, right? Over here we have the Ionian Sea. Over there is the Tyrrhenian Sea. Of course, they both flow into the Mediterranean. But t the water there is far different than it is here. And also the sunsets. Beautiful 
Beltramonto. Beltramonto. Sunsets over there are just breathtaking. You know, Esther uh, alluded to the beautiful beach over there. There's a beautiful beach with white sand, uh, with a crystal blue uh, the sea that you can walk out 200 yards and it's still up only maybe to your, your, your uh, knees and so forth. But the thing that I remember about those beaches is the guys that, the vendors that are on the beaches selling two things. Number one, you have the cold coconut. Coco, coco fresco, bello fresco. They have these little things that they're mm -hmm. walking around. And the second thing are the Chinese uh, massage therapists who are walking around <laughs> saying, Massage, five euro, massage, <laughs> so and you can get right on the beach. You can get a foot massage for five or ten euro, or you can and get a whole back have you thing. Ever, have you ever done that? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So it's a fun place to go. San Vito Locato. It's and the drive is a, there is very beautiful, right? And the, the drive there, to get there from, you have to go it's to a very Casa Lamar, It's a 40 minute drive down there. It's scenic, it's green, it's lush. One cautionary thing if you're planning on going to the Couscous Festival, if you don't make your reservations there early, okay, you won't be able to stay overnight because that place gets S O L D. Out, that, sold yeah. out quick, and you probably have to stay, you know, maybe well, in Casalamari. Well, if you don't even have to, yeah, like Casalamari like or Alcamo is another good option to stay there. And I have one more thing to say. Yeah. On the way down, let's go to Custanasta. Is that how you say that? Custanachi. <laughs> and, see, and see the home of the white marble, the fabled white marble. It's on the way, it's out, no, it's the way yeah. down. And also the caves, right? And the, the caves. The caves Holy where smokes. they have reenactments of the old ways of living here in Sicily. Of course. Then how old is this? I think it's two, 2,000 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. When, when you see this, what do you think? Um, I feel something that is still alive. Yeah. yeah. I think that nothing changed. Can be maybe, uh, can be better, but basically it's the same, so. And of course our friend um, and Freddie Barbera's olive farm, or olive company is also there. So and that's you a could good always little. know Who's that the you're natural? close. Also the church is very beautiful. You're, you always know that you're close to San Vito when you pass through a little town called Purgatorio. Purgatory. <laughs> imagine <laughs> imagine living in a town called Purgatory. It's right by San Vito Lo Capo. Great area. Love the area. Love the people. You got to put that one on your list for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, want me, you want me to speak? I thought you were going to speak. I, was, I thought you wanted me to smile. Smile. <laughs> smile. All right. All right okay, uh, anyway, before we go on, you guys, I want to take you on a little bit of a car trip with us. Just some beautiful scenery in Sicily. Take a look. Beautiful oranges growing in January. Polka dots splattered all over Sicily are scenes like this. I love this wall right here. Just an explosion of colors here today on a January, late January. Glad these windows are clean, Alfredo. Good job. This way you get a little ride with us while we go shopping. And there she is. There's Mama Etna today. You know, Weston asked me uh, on the, when we took the, the cutout, why are you so happy today? Well, I'm happy for two reasons. The first reason is... <laughs> Hot talk. <laughs> the brandy in my tea really hits the spot. That's number one. You but number two... You your step. <laughs> <laughs> but number two, she's making one of my favorite meals of all time today, which is a nutritious, healthy, quick, inexpensive meal. 
What is it? Estimate? Inexpensive. I wouldn't really call it well, inexpensive. Well, okay, we get good. Okay, All right, so what here, is it? first, it's stuffed peppers. Here's the pepper. This is probably one of the smallest peppers hold I've up, seen Hold it up, hold it up again. Pepper. So she's going to cut it usually, in half. Usually they're much bigger, but this is what else I bought. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> There's our neighbor. Hey, kid. <laughs> Tommaso. Is that Tommaso or Mateo? Tommaso. Let's show Tommaso. Mateo. That's Mateo. Mateo. Ciao, see. Mateo. Saluta tutti. No. <laughs> he wants us to look. Okay, what are we? Oh, looking at the helicopter. Oh, All right. right. The helicopter. He's so Anyways, cute. Let, He's so cute. Do you want to start it again? No. Let's, no? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mateo's brother, Tommaso, was the one that had the problem. Do you remember the problem several months back? Perfect. But now I can He's record. Great. He's perfect. So what so about that humbugger? So this is humbugger? coscia di vitello e bovino. It's ground up beef. This costs Veal. 8 euro, uh, 13 euro a kilo, which is 2.2 pounds. And what am I going to put in it? Well, raisins, pine nuts, uh, bread crumbs, parsley, salt, pepper, oh, and one egg. And that's it. And then mix you mix it, it up it all together, up. put it in the oven, you all set. Fill the top of them up, and then you hit it with a little EVOO. Some oh, people, yeah, that's right. EVOO goes in there, too. Some people put cheese, but I'm not that a big fan of having the cheese with that. We'll let you know how And then how whatever goes. extra uh, humbaga is left over, meatloaf. she makes a small little meatloaf, which I have for a sandwich on another day. So Alfredo <laughs> sauce here is a very happy guy today. He's going to eat good thanks to the bun stuff. I'm telling you right now, the old Coverino is going to go bye-bye by the springtime. I feel it in my bones, okay? And I really think for you people that are obsessing about can I come here in May, the answer is I think sure. I, I think, think so. Sure. You have to be vaccinated. As, as of right now, you have to be back. If you're vaccinated, you're going to come here and have a good time. Yeah. And if you decide to come, why in not May? come... In May, why don't you come with Esther and Alfred? We have four more spaces left on our wonderful May tour, which, by the way, is on the East Coast. Is on the East Coast, and we're going to go to Noto for the Infiorata, the it's a great event. famous, famous flower festival. So That's if you're what we think about that trip. Message me because it is a beautiful trip all over the East Coast of the island. Of course, an experience that you will not forget. Of course, the foods. The people, the places, the history, the culture. <laughs> Sicily speaks for no, itself, it's a good time. right? It's a good time. We've kept the price pretty good compared to other people that we know. Uh, all our vendors are in line. We have great buses, great guides, great the great Hotels, hotel that we stay get, at. We have good food, good meat. So come with us. It's getting late. Let's eat. So why don't you join <laughs> in Vino? Why don't you join us? Come on down. We only live once. That's Listen, right. um, last week we made a pre-announcement about the acquisition of some sterling silver trinacris. Let me just give you a little bit of a briefing of what's going on. We had six <laughs> people already send us emails to reserve one. So we had 20, but now we're down to 14. These things are our, we get them once a year. They're our big bestsellers, solid sterling silver. They're about as big as a quarter, so they're not little puny things. And uh, they're just great keepsakes, mementos, you name it. If you're interested, uh, please send e Esther so an we email can one for you. right away so we can reserve them. And you don't have to send us any money until we get them, believe me. But she'll notify you when we get them. Yeah, And for then sure. when she gets back to the States in the springtime, March. in March sometime, she'll mail them out. So if, you, if you'd if you like one of those, and by the way, I have to say something. People They're always beautiful. say to me when we put up the picture that you're going to see, wow, who is that model that's modeling the uh, Trinacria that we have? And the answer is that's the famous Jerry Romeo <laughs> from New York. And from Florida. I didn't realize that. She's a doll, and she was nice enough to take a picture for that us. That was a perfect picture. <laughs> That's because she's the perfect woman. <laughs> of course, we just scratched the surface about Palermo and San Vitolo Capo, but the best way to do it is to come here to Sicily and see it yourself because those are two great places to see <clears throat> on the West Coast. But, of course, we'll have much more on a future episode and there's more special stuff coming on a future episode. <laughs> you need to stay tuned to see what she's cooked up for you. 
So if you want to be notified when we upload a video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it with a friend if you enjoyed this video. And listen to me, you guys. We so, so, so appreciate the time that you took to spend here with us. We love you guys. Grazie mille. Arrivederci. Ciao. Ciao.